What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, welcome back to Let's Play 999 Blind. In the last episode, we got another ending where everybody died. It was a very, very depressing ending as we saw that our friends had died and then we went in to see June who was dying. And then we went out to find that our other friends died and then we died and it was, it was pretty shocking. But it was, it was pretty intense. Good ending though, good ending for sure. And now, we're gonna be aiming for yet another one. So, the first step of this particular ending is going to be that we go to door number five. This is going to be nothing new, so I'm going to turn on skip for the time being until we get to door five. And then I'll skip past that. Um, I think what we're going to end up doing, actually, is... Let me, let me take a look at the flow chart We're going to go five, and then... Is this, this is the next decision point, right? It's the three, seven and eight doors. And so I guess I can actually probably just jump here because we've already done this segment. So honestly, I think I'll do that. And then we'll skip on ahead again. Something worth noting, or something I'll inform you guys of, is I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to record this particular episode. Hopefully it doesn't get interrupted or cut short, but we'll see what I can do in the meantime. So unlike last time when we were really feisty and ended up forcing our way into door three, this time we're gonna go with door eight. And I believe we've done this before, I think? I don't really know, but I, I would bet that we have. We skipped the puzzle segments and all that, and who knows, maybe... It's been mentioned in the past that the puzzle segments are different, so going through them there might be different little cutscenes or character interactions. I'm not convinced I want to go through the puzzles again simply for the sake of that. Especially given the likelihood that for most of the paths up until this point, we've kind of done them all. Not all of them, obviously, given... Well... Quite frankly, there's quite a bit different. Um, so we've gone down the eight, and that blinking in the background, we've gone down the eight pathway. There's the escape room. What is this decision point? There's the one, six, and two doors. What I'm curious about is what this is there, right? Can I not zoom out? All right, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip ahead to this decision. Because I know which branch I need to take at this point. Can I not click, click? There we go. <laughs> it's, it's like, game, please. So yeah, sorry, sorry if I'm in a little bit of a rush. Obviously, we've seen a lot of these different parts of this game before, and uh, it might be nice to refresh going forward, but for the time being, I think, I think we're all right to speed things up. And sorry to those that are maybe looking for that refresher. If you, if you really need them, there are, you know, 35 other episodes of this game on my channel. So, what's interesting is, we have not chosen door number two at this point. How did we get to the previous ending we got to? Oh, I can't check the flow right now? Huh? Because I'm pretty sure... Did we do this yet? Hmm. I feel like I've already done the door to any, but I mean, the game would obviously tell me if otherwise. So, I guess what we'll do then is go through door number two. Hopefully get a little bit more context on what was going on with Clover that one particular time. Yeah. Well, we'll give that a go, and we'll turn off skip. So we can see what happens from here. I thought I'd... Uh, I'm sorry I'm keeping having a tough time keeping track of the different endings and all that, but um, yeah, I guess we're going to want to go through door number two, see where this takes us, and then there will be one more ending before we go for what's called a, a true ending, I believe. At least according to the little guide that I have here uh, from one of the mods slash trusted 999 assistants, I don't know. Regardless, Junpei says, my choice is door two. Santa was unconvinced. Oi, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute there. You cheating? Cheating? I'm asking if you changed your number after you heard what doors we wanted. 
How could I do that? I wrote it down on the paper earlier. I want to see what the flowchart looks like. Okay, so now this novel segment is going to be different. Before we had taken, if this is eight, I forget which one this is, but it's three or seven, right? No, this is the three route path. Okay, so when you take door three, you end up going down here and seeing this particular room. I'm curious then if anything is going to be different about what happens after here based on having this little novel segment by choosing to go here. I'd imagine something will be, right? I'm trying to think, did, on this path, did we go through, did we like physically go through the door, the two door at any point? We'll see, we'll see what happens, I guess. Regardless, this novel segment is, was a question mark block, so we'll see what we can do. Come Let on, me see that. Sure, right. here. Jinbei shrugged and handed it to him. Santa examined it furiously. The others peered at it as well. As they did, Jinbei quickly slipped the piece of paper he'd been hiding into his pocket. Although he'd never know it now, Santa had been justified in his suspicions. Jinbei had switched papers. As we all know from all the other times we've seen him switch these papers. I had three pieces of paper ready for doors 1, 2, and 6, and I put one with door 6 on it into the pot. Put a small mark on it so that he would know which one was his. I just need to make sure... Just need to make sure... I drew last. After I saw everyone else's result, I just chose whatever door I wanted. If the number I'd already put in matched, then I didn't have to switch the paper out. Well, what does it say? Sorry if I sound impatient, sorry if I'm talking over the voice acting that we've heard before at this point. He fought the urge to smirk. <laughs> you got lucky. Sonda snorted and tossed the paper aside, frustrated. Alright. So we know who's going through door two. It'll be me, Lotus, and Junpei. The only problem is the other two teams. So, what's interesting... I'm trying to think. How did this happen in the previous timeline, right? Because there was the three door. And... We went through that. Then we all progressed ahead and I feel like we got to these doors anyways. Either way, well, I'll, I'll keep playing and see what I figured out. Sorry if, I, sorry if it's frustrating that I don't remember everything um, as well as I probably should. June and I want door six. Clover and I choose door one. Maybe I should take, take a look at my own uh, videos real quick. That's not good. We can't open either of those doors with only two people. Everyone was silent. Then suddenly Clover spoke, her face blank and cold. Why don't Santa and June go into door one? With Ace. Huh? Well, they looked at one another. 3 plus 6 plus 1 equals 10, digital root of 1. Finally, Ace spoke. Then, what will you do, Clover? I'll be waiting at the stairs. I think what might be different about this particular ending is, although, in the end, we went through the three door and then it just ended up as seven Lotus and myself anyways. Maybe the other groups will div will have divided differently as a result of this decision. You guys are coming back here, right? That's what seven was saying, wasn't it? That had been what seven said. Sorry, but I just want to be by myself for a while. You understand, right? That sounds incredibly familiar. There was no emotion on her face, but it was drawn and pale, and her eyes were red. No one had the heart to contradict her. The room grew very quiet. Silence drifted down over everything like a blanket of fresh snow. It was Santa who finally spoke. Alright. I'm going through door one. That alright with you, June? Yes. June nodded. Well, we'll be going then. Let's move to. Yeah. Right, let's go. 
And just like that, their paths were set. I won't see June for a while, but... This was my choice. I'm just going to have to suck it up. <laughs> Seven said we'd all see each other again, and I'm going to believe that. He took strength from that thought. The other group went to A deck to go through door one. Clover joined them. Our group is on our way too. We're heading to the bottom deck using the elevators. I wanna, I wanna at least like open the number two door and see what's inside and see if it's what I'm, you know, what I'm expecting, what I've probably already been through, and then I'll probably just continue through things, see if anything's different, show you guys what's different, and then see if the ending itself is different. I wonder what we'll find down there. So here's the number two door. They stepped off the elevator and headed for door two. We ready? Yeah. Yeah, anytime. I think I think these are the rooms where we learn about seven story, like the yeah. cells and all that. I'll go first. One by one, they put their palms under the recognition device and three asterisks blinked to life on its screen. I think that's what happens. Not that I really trust my uh my recognition or my ability to recall that the the events of the story that well when it's been kind of spread out over time. Let's go. The door opened and they leapt inside. Yep. Where the heck is it this time? I don't see it. There it is. It's right there. Okay, so yeah, this is go definitely going to be the uh, the same rooms. The interactions might be different. We're still in this segment, so I'll, I'll still play cautious for now. See if anything's different, but it stopped. Yeah, it, it stopped. Junbei could feel his heart pounding against the inside of his ribs. Seven and Lotus were breathing hard and fast. <laughs> Man, I'll never get used to that. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal thing. <laughs> right. Alright. Junpei looked around again. <laughs> Sorry for those of you that know where I'm supposed to go or what I'm trying to do and I'm just not doing it or are getting bored with the repetitive nature of backtracking through the different timelines and all. It's just something inherent to the process and uh, I appreciate your patience. It's always pretty short but it's got five doors. Three on the left and then one on, only one on the right. Don't forget the last one at the end of the hall. But it's got a metal plate over it so I doubt we're going to get anywhere that way. After taking a look around the room himself, Seven spoke. Alright, let's get started. I think we'd probably better split up. You two okay with that? Yes. No problem. Sure thing. Then I'll take this first one. Seven out of them and stepped into the room closest to him. I'll try the one next to it. At last, Junpei was left alone. Well, I guess I'd better get started too. He looked intently at the remaining three doors. There it is. So, from from the mini, you know, sort of guide I'm looking at, I really don't think anything is going to change for the remainder of this part of the, the playthrough. I think it's so long as I get to this room, whether it's via going through door three or eight or whatever it may be, as long as I choose to go through this door, everything is going to be the same from here on out. So, I think, when I honestly think about it, right, we're probably on this path now. Now, it could be different, and it might be different. What do these mean again? I think it means we have the items or the door is locked or something along those lines. I don't know what the red ones versus the white ones mean. But uh, we could try to progress through these segments or see if the ending is any different. I don't have a lot of time so I'm torn as to whether or not I really want to go through 
all of these segments and see if they're any different. I'm tempted to say that they're probably not. I really don't think they will be. We have these cells and then we have the torture room. And in each of those we learn about Seven's story and we learn about Lotus's story. Do I think any of those will be different based on these events? Which room is this again? The lab. Outside the lab. I forget what was... I forget the lab. That's like with all the chemistry experiments and stuff, right? Um, what to do, what to do, what to do. I honestly think what I'm gonna do is see if the ending is any different. Just jump ahead to the submarine end and see if anything is different. And if it is, cool. If not, then I'll continue with the one more ending I actually really need to get. Also, why can I not zoom out? I, I'm afraid to hit the escape key for out of fear of you know messing up something with the recording or not. But what is this decision? Leave no one behind? I don't know. What was going on there? Hmm. Alright, well... I'm gonna probably make a cut here. Or, you know what, we'll, we'll head to the submarine end. We're just gonna, we're gonna do it. We're gonna see if it's any different. Time passed. Junpei wept, curled around Akane's body. He cried and cried until he had no tears left. When last year fell, Junpei was no more. His body remained bowling as an empty shell. Bell ringing, all that jazz. I'm probably going to do some editing magic and just cut to when I'm pr when I'm probably talking next after this ending isn't any different than the previous time. It's news. All right, so I looked at the scene where we find Clover and Santa and Ace's bodies. I don't think that was any different. I think something that seemed a little bit different was. The, when they ran into the Jupiter key, it wasn't like Junpei sprinting to the Jupiter key while Lotus and Seven were confused. Instead, they they all ran to it and there wasn't any, you know, discord around, wait, should we go or should we wait for the others here or anything like that? Um, and they weren't surprised or Junpei wasn't like surprised and frustrated that the Jupiter door was there and they needed the key. And then were then, you know, consequently surprised that it was unlocked. Instead, I think it was, they just kind of, oh, it's already unlocked because they maybe... I, I don't remember where we got the Jupiter key, but I'm pretty sure we got it in one of the rooms that we traveled on this particular route. But aside from that, I don't think anything was different. When looking at the three dead bodies on the grand staircase, you can't see Ace's hands, and I don't know where Clover's wrist, wrist like band thing, <laughs> bracelet is supposed to be, but if it's under her sleeves, they're not visible as well. Um, Santa did not have his character, his body shown with the bracelet, meaning potentially the killer wanted to take the three and the eight bracelets, which would mean seven would probably be, you know, the person, assuming there were only three people going through, or three bracelets going through this door, but that's obviously not a safe assumption to make, given that seven potentially ends up dead himself, so not really uh, confident on that, but so what I did was I kind of backtracked a bit. I started the ending for the submarine. It looked like it was going to be the same, so I went back to this branching point and instead what we're going to do because we've already gone through the five door and then the eight door is we're going to go through this middle path which I believe is the six door. So yet again we're going to do all of that. Um, so let me at least just make sure this middle path is indeed the six door and then we can progress as needed. Let Junpei do some quick maths in his head. <laughs> so door six. And I'm pretty sure that's the one where Junpei does the least work because he um, already had the six card in there. What? Ah, oh, come on, Junpei. That's right, I guess they have to decide themselves who's gonna go through which door after they argue about it, after they try and figure out how to make it work for everyone involved. Is this where Seven and Lotus are bantering with each other? That's a pretty fun scene. Okay, so the right E-deck. Okay, it is. So, it seems like the next big branch point, ah, these escape rooms, are they potentially have different things, right? 
they potentially have different scenes and all that. Are the red things stuff that I've unlocked at this point along my route so far? What happens if I jump to here? If I jump to outside the room? I remember this. <laughs> So, interestingly enough, this key is not shown. Hmm, why is it locked? Is it, it would be unlocked if I had gone a different route up until this point? I think that's the case. Well, regardless, I think I just want to jump here. Leave no one behind? I don't remember this branching point. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Apparently it's pretty important because let me let me look at the flow screen. They took the elevator up to C deck because this one leads to the potential knife stabbing. Although that's with a different path of travel up to here, I believe. That's when we start with door four, which would be this path on the left. So, hopefully things are different now. We'll, we'll, we'll see, I guess, right? They took the elevator up to C-Deck. Please forgive my, my floundering around. This is what happens when you have limited time to record and you want to play through a game blind but also efficiently. And, and I appreciate all the help I'm getting for this along the way. But, anyways. Once there, they headed back toward the main hall and the central staircase. It didn't take them long. Look, it's seven in seven and Lotus. They didn't look happy. That's right, Clover's missing. We've got a problem. Clover is gone. <laughs> what? Junpei and his three companions looked at one another. He turned back to Seven and Lotus. What do you mean, gone? Santa, Ace, and June had their own questions to ask. When? Why? You two went into door one with Clover, didn't you? Seven and Lotus responded as best they could. Yeah, we went through the door together. But Clover barely spoke to us. She just did her own thing the whole time. There were four rooms on the other side of door one. She wouldn't let us into the fourth room. I'm trying to remember what was what was behind door one again. That would be this way, right? The chart room. Hmm. I don't remember that one too well. That's outside the room, and then there's the captain's quarters. So I don't really know exactly what they mean by. It's probably like the hallway or something like that. I don't know. She just said, I'll take care of this one. And shut the door. She must have blocked it with something on the other side. We waited for a while, but Clo Clover didn't come out. We called for her, but she didn't answer. So I kicked down the door and we went into the room. But... It was empty. Clover wasn't there. There was a door on the other wall. And it was open. So Clover's running around. We figure she opened the door and left by herself. We ran after her, of course, but... Well, obviously we didn't find her. You figured that much out. Clover's gone. Chupe thought for a moment. When did this happen? We got here just before you. You certainly have excellent timing. So I think one of the one of the downsides of wanting to be time efficient here is I don't remember exactly what I did differently compared to the last time I was in this situation. So it's not like a oh I I didn't let Santa go in the room with the gun this time as opposed to the time I did. And so, obviously there'll be a different result. It's instead more of a, 
okay, I know I did something differently along the way here. I went through certain rooms, so I have certain knowledge, and I forced other people to go through certain rooms, so they've had access to certain items or other knowledge themselves, or bonding moments, or lack of exposure to certain ideas or knowledge along the way here, which obviously influences how they act at this point, but I'm not 100% sure of what those things are. Uh, no, we have it. Finally, Ace spoke. His voice had an edge of resolve and concern. Very well then, we'd best separate and look for We haven't much time left. Let's begin. Ah. Yeah. There were quick nods all around and the six remaining players spread out. Spread out. Not a, not a good strat, but that's alright. Junpei and Jun ran into the central hospital and looked around. I really want to see if we're on a different route. No! We're on this route! I don't want to be on that route. Why is this route still locked? Do I really have to go back through the escape rooms? Sorry that you guys are watching me figure this out on screen. I don't blame you for wanting to skip around if that's what you're doing or something like that. Um. I don't know if I have the time to ask. I think what I'll do is go back to the escape rooms, go through them, see if anything's different, see if this little icon changes, because I'm pretty sure that's what needs to happen for us to go down this path over here. So we'll, you know what, let's let's do it. We'll, we'll go to the engine room and re-escape. Oh boy. Hopefully I remember it all. I will let you guys know if I run into anything different. Huh? Is this different? You know, speaking of experiments, Santa suddenly stopped. Is this is this new or different? There was this experiment some scientists did with rats. まずこの地型の水槽を用意する。半分ぐらい水が貯められた水槽だ。I don't I don't remember this. Do you, do you? First they took a square C-shaped tank and filled it with enough water that the rats could drown it. この水槽には出口が2箇所ついてる。The tank has two exits. そのうち上の方の先端の出口を A。just to make it easy, we'll call one A and the other B. Exit A is pitch black, so dark even a rat can't see anything. But exit B is electrified, which means the rat can't leave through it. Sate, Kono Jotaide. So, what would a rat do if it was put in this situation? Which exit would the rat choose? There was a moment of silence after Santa posed the question, and then Ace responded. B, of course. The rat has no way of knowing that the exit B or that exit B is electrified. Exactly. The rat goes to exit B. Of course, like I said, it's electrified. Which means the rat can't get out that way. So, after a lot of trial and error, the rat finally finds exit A. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I can't say that's very interesting or relevant. It's simply the story of a laboratory experiment. Except that exactly describes what, well, the player is experiencing right now by playing this game. You're right, it isn't very interesting yet. See, these scientists repeated this experiment over and over, and they found that after this experiment had been done, the more it was done, the more likely that right off the bat they would go for the pitch black. 
繰り返し繰り返し、yep. 何度もこの実験を行ったらしい Using hundreds of different rats over several generations. すると驚くべき結果が出た This produced some surprising results. 世代を減るにつれて正解である A の出口へとたどり着く時間がどんどん減っていったんだ<笑> With each generation, the rats took less time to find the correct exit. 最終的には一発で A から脱出してしまうラットも現れたとか、hmm. Eventually, a rat was put in the tank who instantly chose exit A without even attempting to go to exit B. しかも話はそれだけでは終わらない。But that wasn't the most impressive part. その実験が行われた研究所から遠く離れた別の施設で検証を行ってみても結果は同じだった。The same experiment was conducted in another laboratory far from the original one with the same results. I wonder if this is maybe to introduce the idea that the series of experiments, right? There was one nine years ago and now there's one now, is, is somewhat similarly motivated. Just with people. No, on second thought, the results weren't really the same. Rat たちはなんと実験一回目にして続々と最短のクリアタイムを叩き出してしまったらしい Given the morphogenetic field, right? The rats in the second experiment began the trials with significantly faster times than the first rats in the initial. 最初の実験で使われたラットたちとは全く血のつながりがないにもかかわらず These rats weren't related to the others and had never even come in contact with them, and yet. They all easily found their way to exit A as though they already knew. What did it mean? Telepathy? Are you suggesting something like telepathy? They were passing information to one another through some undetectable medium? Ace looked skeptical. Santa snorted at him. How the heck would I know? I'm not any kind of scientist. I don't know what made him do that. But I do know that story's true. And if you've got another explanation, I'd sure love to hear it. Come on, let's get going. There's still a lot here we haven't checked out. And we gotta get the heck out of here before June passes out. Without waiting for a response, he turned around and started walking. Junpei, however, wasn't quite ready to leave the topic no, alone. Hey, wait, there, there's something I want to ask you. What? What? Santa stopped and turned around. Why did they use that tank for the experiment? Huh? Huh? Well, I mean, it seems like you could conduct the same experiment without the water. I think this is where we're going to get the answer that it's like, oh, it needs to be a life or death situation. They could have just used a dry box, you know? Yeah, they need to induce some sort of peril to, to activate the morphogenetic field or whatever. If they needed to motivate the rats to escape, they could have, I don't know. B の向こうに餌か何かを設置しておけばよかったはず。Put some bait by exit B or something. なのに、どうして溺れさせる必要があったんだ ?I mean, do they really have to make it so the rats can drown? s o n t a gave a grim bark of a laugh. エマージェンスは、エマージェンシーによって生み出される。You know, the word emergency comes from the same root as the word emerge. こんな言葉聞いたことないか ?You ever think about that? エマージェンシーはわかるよな。緊急事態のことだ。Well, an emergency is something urgent, often something dangerous. And to emerge means to sort of come out or appear or rise out of something else. So, what's going to emerge in an emergency? Inspiration. Hmm. Wait, inspiration. I, wa I want to. I wish he'd say it again, but I'm pretty sure the Japanese word he used was hirameki, which I means. Which I think means more of like an, like an enlightenment, right? It's not like inspiration as in like a motivation to complete something, but more of like a, like a realization or,、um, yeah, like, like an epiphany. So. Yeah. Think about it. When the chips are down, either you crack or your mind focuses and pulls up what you need. Yeah. So I think that's, that's what he's talking about. So, 
in an emergency, your real potential emerges? Is, is that what you're saying? Ah. Yeah. That's why the rats had to drown. They had to be in danger. There had to be an emergency for inspiration to emerge. Junpei suddenly felt cold. The back of his head was aching and his stomach felt strange. I definitely don't remember this. So that's definitely a different cutscene. Interesting. So, in the, in the greater scheme of things, let's take a look at the flowchart. So we've unlocked the key there. Okay, so I think I've got an idea here. Is It's basically... This red lock is showing us that we need all of these red keys in order to move on. So I, I will, for the sake of making sure, complete the rest of the puzzle and see if anything is different. However, I suspect that the little cutscene, or event we just had is all that's going to be different about this escape room and we'll move on to the next escape room and go through it until we encounter another event that'll be different from the first time around and then after you know doing that this red the second red lock will uh free up and then this or the second key icon will free up and then this lock will free up so that we can go through the final path and because we've already encountered this these events in previous timelines that's why the red keys up top here are already unlocked and the white ones are ones that well we simply don't have available to us based on the the timeline we're currently on okay i feel like i'm getting a better understanding of how the game works i also unfortunately don't think i have a lot of time left to record so I think what's going to happen is, I'm going to say that in the next episode, we'll go to the next escape room, and we'll trigger whatever event is left there, and then we'll see what ending lies in store for us? Dang, it's a real shame. I really want to keep going through this escape room, and then, you know, to this escape room and see what event is there, but I really just think that the time, not just from what will show up in the video that you guys are watching, but also in between all the edits, I'll inevitably cut out is just not going to be, uh, it's just not going to work with the time limit, of, time limit I've got at the moment. So, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. It was a lot of jumping around. It was a lot of trying to figure out how to make all the timeline jumping work. Honestly, it probably wasn't that exhilarating of an episode. And I appreciate your patience and not getting too frustrated with me as I try to, you know, uh, jump my way around the game and figure out how to get exposed to everything the game has to offer and yeah um this is just part of the this is part of the blind experience so <laughs> maybe it's a little bit of a i don't know window into what it's like but anyways until the next episode this is Moon Knight zero and this mission is complete <laughs>